Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can y'all say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. Listen, we want to welcome you to Full of Faith Bible Church, where our church mission is faith, faith building, building Bible teaching for living, growth, and discipleship. And we are a church that loves God and loves people. We love God and we love people. We love you. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter your background, we love you. Listen, the world will be a, a, a lot better, in a lot better shape if we just love one another, right? And so, listen, we want to welcome you. Um, we thank you for tuning in. You can watch any church service um, um, uh, at this time of, of, you know, this 11 o'clock hour, but faithfully you, you tune in to us, man, and so we are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. We can't wait until we get to um, gather again physically, all of us, um, um, to where we can just... Uh, encourage the believers and be with one another, but watch this, listen, COVID-19 is real, um, and so we do want to be mindful um, of that, uh, but we do trust God, and we do believe in God, and we know God is um, who he says he is, and everything that we need, that's who God is, and so, man, listen, we can't wait to see you now, watch this, I, 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 I really need for you to do something, I need for you to, um, um, uh, pray for us, Full of Faith Bible Church, um, simply because in January is our fourth birthday. Full of Faith Bible Church will be four years old, right? Can we celebrate that with a hand clap? I'll be four years old, man, in January. In January will be four years old. Yeah. There are a lot of churches that don't, even, that don't even make it that long, and so we're grateful for what God has done. We're grateful for what, what God has brought us from um, um, and, and where he's taken us. And we we'll appreciate everyone who's been on this journey with us and everyone who's on this journey with us right now. We're so, we're, we appreciate it. We're so thankful. Now, here's why I need for you to pray for us. Every year we have a church celebration birthday party. Every single year, we, we do it big, man. We invite people in, and, and I had a guest preaching in, and, and, and he uh, he would share the word, and, and we just love on one another, and we, we, we eat and just enjoy each other, man. Last year, the house was packed. And so, but you know what, man? This year, we can't do that. We can't do it because of COVID-19, man. And so, I'm not going to lie. It is a little discouraging. It is a little heartbreaking to know that we can't celebrate uh, um, um, the way that we normally would celebrate. But guess what? Some kind of way, we still going to celebrate. We still going to celebrate what God is doing um, at Full of Faith Bible Church. We, man, we're so grateful of the lives that, that, that um, um, have been impacted by this ministry. And we're so grateful for what God is doing and what he will continue to do through FFBC. So here's what I need you to do. I need for you to, if you have not, I need for you to like the Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube channel, man. And listen, I say that, and people probably say, man, why do you say the same thing every single week? Because every single week, there's been a new person um, liking the Facebook page. Somebody long, you know, uh, that's connected with someone else. Someone that's connected to uh, uh, other friends, and but they watch the service. They, they, so now they're following the ministry. Uh, uh, and I also need you to, to subscribe to the YouTube channel, man. Listen, um, when you do that, it helps impact uh, uh, the lives of other people. Um, also, man, type in where you're watching us from. We know we got people watching us from Kendale, uh, Texas. Uh, we got people watching us from Burleson, from Arlington, Mansfield, Fort Worth, Dallas, um, um, Houston, uh, 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 Hubbard, Kearns, Dawson, Carson County. Hillsboro, we got my people in Oklahoma, we got my people in California, we got my people in, uh, 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 in Canada, we got people all over the world that is tuning in with us, man, and so um, we are forever, forever, forever grateful that you have tuned in, that you faithfully tune in to us every single week. Um, uh, now, I also need for you to do this. I need for you to, um, this is probably one of the most important things I need for you to do. I need for you to pray for your pastors. Pray for your local leaders. Listen, so many leaders are trying to decide, okay, do we go back into the building? 
Do we stay at home? Do we stay virtually? What do we need to do? There's so many different decisions. Also, on top of that, you got pastors who are trying to uh, 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 counsel people and, and lead people and, and do all these other things, different things, man. It's more than just preaching on Sunday. So pray for your local leader. Pray for your local leader. Listen, I think I've talked enough. It's time for us to get um, uh, uh, to, to our worship part of the service through singing. And so, man, if, the, if you're watching us right now, man, I, I want to challenge you. I want you to pretend that you are in the building, right? Pretend that you are in the church building. And in the church building, at least 80 to 85 percent of us, when, when, when singing is, when praises through song is going up, you probably wouldn't be sitting down, right? You probably would be hands lifted, hands clapping. Man, I'm going to challenge you to do that. Now, I understand that you don't have to do that. But I'm going to challenge you to do that, man, um, um, because I want you to really um, uh, uh, think about what God has done for you, okay? So I'm going to challenge you to really engage in what's taking place today. And I believe God will do something miraculously in your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I love you. I thank you for Full of Faith Bible Church. I, first of all, Father God, I thank you for you being who you are. You chose us. Thank you for your faithfulness, your love, and your kindness. You're so great. You're so great to be praised. But we thank you for everyone who's watching right now. Everyone who's listening right now, I pray that you speak a word into their lives. To what has an impact, to what someone asks the question, what must I do to be saved? And then someone's fire is just um, um, uh, uh, blazing them. And so I thank you for using us, and I thank you for the opportunity. I pray that lives are changed today. We give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say it, amen. Amen, 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 amen. I mean, if you know that your breakthrough is coming, God is good, and in his presence, uh, we find joy and peace and strength to overcome. So join us this morning.
invite the presence of God. Because your presence is an open door. And we want you, Lord, like never before. I can't speak for anybody else, but I can tell you, man, that every day of my life, I not only want the Lord, but I need the Lord. And so when we're talking about his presence, man, we, we, we talking about that his presence is way more important, has way more value than any presence, than any presence, because his presence is something that we cannot live without. You try making it through life without the, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You, you try making it through life without the guidance of of, 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 or the leadership, or the teaching, or the counsel without the Holy Spirit. The reason why the world may, is probably in, in, in challenges right now is because we are not living under the statement where we say one nation under God. How do we know that? How do we know we're not living one nation under God? Simply because you can look at all the chaos that's taking place right now. You can look at all the hate right now. You can look at all the division right now. But what happens when we just truly, truly begin to just uh, bask in his presence, bask in his glory for who he really is? If we always live in one nation under God, his presence is amazing to me. Israel, Hilton sings the song, uh, uh, your presence is heaven to me. Because there's nothing like it. And it's indescribable. Let me pray for us and then we're going to get right into the word. Father, I thank you and I love you. I thank you for you just being who you are. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for um, restoring joy. I thank you for restoring strength. I thank you for every single thing that you have done and that you're doing. Um, um, in our lives. Father, we love you so much. We love you so much and we recognize that there's nothing we can do without you. So I pray right now that uh, 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 for those who are here in house and for those who are watching online, I pray that your presence is felt. I pray that this is not just some ordinary church service, but this is a truly um, um, if in, someone will have an encounter with you, a, a, a road to Damascus encounter, to where the scales now fall out their eyes and they see the goodness of the Lord. We love you. We praise you. We give you the glory. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. 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 Grab your word. Let's go to work this week. It's funny how um, um, uh, God changes some things <laughs> um, um, right when you think you have a plan. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Grab your word, let's lift it high. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the true word of God. It is the true word of God. And I believe. And I believe. Every word in it. Every word in it. Simply because. Simply because. It is God's very breath. It is God's very breath. Listen, let's go to um, Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. And go to chapter um, 7. Go to Isaiah chapter 7. Go to verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, go to verse 14. Now, you know how we do it every week. If you got it, say, I got it. Type, type it in, type it in. I need to know that you got it. I need to know that you, I know the correct term. Is, if you had it, say, I had it. No. If you got it, say, I got it. Right? <laughs> All right. Isaiah chapter 7, beginning at verse, or reading verse 14. The text says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name 
Emmanuel. All right? And shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew now. Matthew chapter 1. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And go to verse 23. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 23. You got it, I got it. Which one is it? 23, verse 23. Here's what the text says. Matter of fact, go to verse 22. And then we need 23. So all of so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. We just read the prophet Isaiah, right? Mm -hmm. Through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They shall call him, and I love this. Matthew says, and they shall call him. Emmanuel, his name is, shall be called, his name is Emmanuel, which is translated, here it is, God is with us. Mm -hmm. God is with us. Listen, I was trying to move on from <laughs> the conversation of the greatest gift. I was trying to move on from that, um, uh, but, 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 um, God just began to speak. I was out walking, exercising early this morning in my neighborhood, and God just began to speak and said, no, nope. first of all, you can never stop talking about the greatest gift. And he just reminded me that there's so much more that we need to discuss when, as, as it relates to Jesus. And, and, and um, so we, let, let me just kind of backtrack for those who may, who may be um, tuning in to us for the first time. We have been doing this teaching entitled The Greatest Gift. The Greatest Gift. And we, as believers, we understand that the greatest gift that we can receive is Jesus. The greatest gift that we can ever receive is Jesus. Because Jesus um, 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 is the only one who can give us exactly what we need. And what we needed and what many of us will need is salvation. So when we think of Jesus, we think of um, um, uh, 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 not just a man, not just a person, uh, uh, not just uh, this spiritual being, not, not, not just uh, thinking of him. Some people say, oh, he's just a, a mythical figure. Or he wasn't real. And he was, or he was, some religions say, oh, he was just a prophet. Oh, he was just a teacher. No, 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 no. Jesus was much more than that. Mm -hmm. Right? He was much more than that. And, and, and um, what we need to appreciate and what we need to understand is that uh, Jesus uh, is salvation. Jesus, uh, which means he is saved, he is our savior. He saved the day. He rescued us. He brought us back from death and he's taking us to life, giving us life, right? Um, um, uh, not only is Jesus salvation, but John the Baptist tells us that Jesus is the Lamb of God. That means that he was that sacrifice that God himself gave to the world mm -hmm. so that we can have everlasting eternal life. And not only is Jesus the greatest gift by being salvation, by being the Lamb of God, but we talked about through the prophet Isaiah last week that Jesus is a wonderful counselor, mm -hmm. that Jesus is a mighty God, that Jesus is an everlasting Father or eternal Father, depending on your Bible translation, and Jesus is Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Can I just go ahead, go ahead and go on and, and talk about how Jesus is Lord of Lords? Can I talk about how Jesus is King of Kings? Yeah. Can I talk about how Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith? Can I talk about how Jesus is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega? Can I talk about all these amazing things, who Jesus is, that Jesus is grace, that Jesus is mercy, that Jesus is joy, that Jesus is love, that Jesus is all these things that we need? Yeah. That's why his presence 
is so much more important and so much valuable than money, than, than people, than anything else. It's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Because he's great, and he's great to be praised. That's who he is. My people used to sing that song, Great is the Lord, great to be praised. That's who he is, man. He's indescribable. And so when we're talking about the greatest gift, um, um, uh, uh, we, there are so many different things that we can say about Jesus that makes him the greatest gift. Because he's not just one thing. Yes, he's Lord and Savior, but man, under those umbrellas, there's so many different attributes about him. So many different things about him. Watch this. Thank you, God. Thank you. Uh, uh, do me a favor. We're going to come back to these verses uh, uh, in a minute. But do me a favor. Go to uh, 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 Luke chapter 1. Go to Luke chapter 1. Go to Luke chapter 1. And I want to show you something, man, of, 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 of why we need to appreciate this great gift. Let, and, and, and we're going to look at it. Watch this. I want to look, go to verse 46. Luke chapter, chapter 1, beginning at verse 46. And I, I want to look at this from, um, um, you know, how I, I, I get excited when you're talking about Jesus, right? My voice elevates. Um, um, I speak loud because I, 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 I love the Lord. I know what he has done for me. But listen to what Mary says about her son. Uh, a matter of fact, listen to what Mary says. That Mary just begins to praise God for uh, being chosen and for this great gift. Listen to what Mary says. Mary says this in verse 46. And Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. Some translations say, my soul exalts the Lord. Some translations say, my soul, my soul uh, proclaims the Lord. That means that everything within me um, um, is, 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 is uh, at a point to where it, 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 it's, it's exploding because of God's goodness, because of God's grace. Everything within me wants to let the world know of the goodness of God. Everything within me wants to match. So I'm going to, my soul is going to magnify his name. Watch this. I love that she just didn't say that my mouth is going to say how good God is. But no, everything within me. Because I'm not going to say anything, but my soul is something different. My soul says, my soul says, yes, thank you, God. My soul says God is good. My soul says God is great. My, my soul says Jesus is everything. My soul magnifies the Lord. Mm -hmm. My soul exalts, the, uh, magnifies simply meaning that it makes it bigger. And there are many Bible scholars that talk about how Mary uh, 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 is actually modeling something from Hannah that was in 1 Samuel. Uh, we have to go through and, and study that scripture to show you what we're talking about. And it, it also talks about how I come from the Latin word magnificent, uh, uh, which means Mary was singing a hymnal song right now. Mm -hmm. She's singing a hymn. And, 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 and what would happen if we just begin to sing a hymnal from our soul? A hymnal to describe how good and how faithful uh, and how amazing God is. So my soul magnifies. It makes it, it makes God bigger because he's bigger than what you just read on the paper. Yeah. He's bigger than what you just watch on the movie. He's bigger than what uh, any pastor can ever talk about. He's much bigger than that. Right? He's much bigger than that. And my soul magnifies by exalting. That means to elevate. He elevates. Mary said, my soul elevates the Lord. Makes him bigger, elevates the Lord. And I do that by proclaiming who he is. Let me ask you something. Who is God to you? Who is Jesus to you? We've been talking about that he is the greatest gift. And I don't know who may be going through what. I know that 2020 has been... I'm crazy for everybody, but I know that there are some people who have really experienced hard times through COVID-19 and 2020, you just really wish you could erase it from your mind. 
You wish you could erase it from your mind and just start over. I understand that. I get that 100% because things have been hectic for a lot of people. But Mary says something in the scripture. She said, man, I, I'm going to proclaim who, of his goodness. I'm going to proclaim of, his, uh, uh, of, 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 of how good he is. How can we say that? How, why would Mary say that? Look at the next verse. Thank you, God. I really just want to go here. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of a man of a maid servant. In other words, what Mary is saying, some translations say uh, that God has chosen a slave. That, that God has chosen a lowly person to do something great, which is bring the Savior into the world. That God chose me. That, that favor is raining upon me. That, that, that his grace and mercy is raining upon me. I'm a nobody. I'm the lowest of the low. I'm a maid servant. I'm a slave of someone. I, I, I have nothing good about me, yet still favor found me. Can I tell you right now, in spite of what you are going through right now, you are still alive, you are still working, you are still breathing, that means favor has found you, you have found favor in the sight of the Lord. And that's what happened with Mary. And so Mary says, man, God has chosen a low person like me. And so because of that, I'm going to exalt his name, I'm going to magnify his name by proclaiming who he really is. He is the greatest gift. And that there is no one like him. That's what Mary says to the She begins to sing a hymnal from her heart. This is what the Lord has done. He's chosen me. He's, uh, 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 she, I, I, you know what, thank you, God. I just uh, uh, dare somebody that in your darkest moment begins to sing from your soul. Mm -hmm. Not just from your lips, right. but sing from your soul. It's nothing like some good old, I remember my grandma used to tell me this, Miss Ethel Miller. My grandma had me listen to all kind of music, but she would always tell me, boy, it ain't nothing like some good old soul music. Because that soul reaches deep down within you. It, it, it makes you feel, it makes you experience. You are experiencing the lyrics that you're reading or you're reciting or that's on the paper. You are, it, it's something about that good soul. And so Mary says, man, my soul, something that is deep within me, goes way beyond my lips, but it's, a, it's the lips of my heart. It's the lips that is within me that's going to magnify Jesus, that's going to exalt Jesus because I'm going to proclaim Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm going to proclaim to the nation who he is. And that there's no one like him. Now, <laughs> let's get back to the original text. Go back to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Because, you know, we read last week Isaiah chapter 9. While Isaiah was letting the people, the kids of Israel know that, um, listen, don't worry, don't panic. Uh, um, I know you're walking in darkness right I know you're living in darkness right now. Um, uh, uh, you, you, you're experiencing dark times right now. But a son, but a child will be born. A son will be given. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 and he's going to come save today. He's going to be a wonderful counselor. He's going to be a mighty God. He's going to be everlasting father. He's going to be Prince of Peace. This is what Isaiah is saying. But even before them, Isaiah prophesies about Jesus. In chapter 7. Because in chapter 7, he makes it clear and he says, man, that this child will be born. Well, my, my, in fact, let me just read verse 14 again. Then he said, uh, uh, sorry, verse 14. I got the small print body. He said, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Okay, so watch this. There are people that 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 don't believe that, that that don't believe that God can still work miracles, mm -hmm. and that because I heard preachers on on, on on YouTube say this, I'm talking about well-known, popular, popular pastors say this that that God don't perform miracles no more. <laughs> but if you if you thank God, but if you go through and read. 
the rest of Mary's hymnal that she's singing or that she's reciting, you understand that Mary is saying, man, I'm a, I'm a living miracle right now. You are witnessing a miracle right now. Because God has chosen a virgin, someone who ain't never had relations before. Matter of fact, if you go through the study, uh, 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 get deeper into God's word, you understand that Mary was just a young girl. She, she was a teenager. She, she's young, anywhere between the ages of what, what uh, 12 and 16, somewhere in there. 13 and 16, she's a young girl, and God chose her. Uh, uh, she's now pregnant, but never had a relation uh, uh, to bring uh, 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 the Savior into the world. Mary said, you are witnessing a miracle, and I believe we serve a God who still works miracles. I believe we serve a God who can still move mountains. I believe we serve a God who can make the deaf hear. I believe we serve a God who can make the blind see. I believe that we serve a God who can make the weak speak. I believe that we serve a God who can still calm storms. I believe that we serve a God who's greater than anything, anyone you can ever imagine. Why? Because he's still a force here. Yes, he does. And there's no one like him. Watch this. And Isaiah says in the text that the Lord himself will give you a sign. Yes, that means that God, watch this, um, and there are many people who don't believe in signs and wonders. Who don't believe that God can reveal some things through his creation. Who don't believe that God can reveal some things through his word. And who don't believe that God can reveal some things through people. And don't believe that God will give us a sign. And Isaiah is prophesying to the people and letting them know, man, listen, don't worry, don't panic. Don't worry, don't panic. I know things are tough right now. I know things are hard right now, but the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look what he says. He says this. Behold, the virgin shall conceive a son. Stop. Is that not a sign right there? <laughs> That the virgin, mm -hmm. some kind of way, is going to conceive a son. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious to want to know how science can explain that. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to want to know what type of scientist or, or, or whoever is going to explain this type of science. You, you looking to see if God performs miracles? You looking to see if God is on site with that? Okay, here's how he's going to begin. He's going to begin by making a virgin pregnant. He's going to begin showing you who he is and that he's going to protect you, that he's going to save you, that he's going to come and rescue you by making a virgin pregnant. And this virgin, watch this, who's lowest of the low, who? Thank you, God. You ought to celebrate the fact that God has chosen you. Because we are the lowest of the lowest way. And you got, I'm, I'm, I'm going to chop you down off your high horse right now. You are the lowest of the lowest way. Right? And God has chosen us. You ought to celebrate. You ought to sing us a hymn from your, from your belly to say, man, thank God I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing me. Look, look, look what the text says. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Here's the sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now go to Matthew. Go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew. Thank you, God. Go back to Matthew. Chapter 1, verse 23. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Look what he says. He says, Behold. Oh, hold on, hold on. Go, go, um, I'm sorry, go to verse 22. <laughs> 22. It says, So all of this, so all, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Okay, so watch this. From Old Testament to New Testament. I know in, in our physical Bible, we open it up, and it seems like the New Testament happens immediately, right after the Old Testament is written. 
No, no, no. It's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I think 400 plus years from Old Testament to New Testament. Mm -hmm. And so before the New Testament was even written, before Jesus was physically uh, 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 really walking on earth, dwelling among the people, we know he was here in Old Testament spiritually, but before he was uh, really dwelling physically among the people, um, he was prophesied about um, 400 years before the New Testament. And, and, and he's prophesied, uh, uh, Isaiah is prophesying about him. Watch this. And I love this because I, I got to say this. I have to say this. I have to say this. The Bible says this in verse 22. says this. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled. That means that, that this, ha this has to happen. It has to happen. It has to come to completion, right? That, that, that it has to be fulfilled. It's spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Mm -hmm. Spoken. By who? The Lord. Spoken by who? The Lord. the Lord. One more time. Spoken by who? The Lord. So this ain't something that Isaiah is making up himself. Right. And what you got to be careful is, is for so many people are using that title. Yes. I'm a prophet. So many people are using the title, I'm a prophet. So many people are using the title, I'm an apostle. Watch this. So many people are using the title, I'm a bishop. So many people are using the title, I'm a pastor. But have not been called by God. Mm -hmm. And they speak it out of turn, speak it out of order, giving people false hope, making people uh, have these false beliefs of all these different things. And, uh, and, and that's why I love the fact that, that, that Matthew says in the scripture that it was, that this prophecy had to be fulfilled, but it was spoken by the Lord. This is what the Lord was telling the prophet Isaiah. And he tells Isaiah this. Here's what he says. Behold, or this is what Isaiah was saying in this in the text. Behold, the virgin shall be called, or shall be with child, Bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Here it is, which is translated, God is with us. Yeah. As we're talking about the greatest gift, we're talking about Emmanuel, that God is with us. Now, let me give you context, and then we'll give you application. Context is, um, let me go back to Isaiah first. The people of Israel, watch this, on the run from many different people, armies, whatever the case may be, walking in darkness, still living in confusing time, still don't know what's what, still don't get, still don't uh, uh, know what to believe, still don't know, they know God is real, but they, but they listen to other people, and other people say that's good, go to cat. They, they do all these different things, they do all these different things, go through all these rituals, go through all these things, and Isaiah has to tell them, listen, don't panic. Don't, don't be scatterbrained. Don't, don't be all over the place. God is going to send someone that's going to make things better. And his name is going to be Emmanuel. And what I love about that name is that the name means God is with us. Mm -hmm. That means that even when we're wandering out in the wilderness, God is with us. Yeah. That means that even when we're going through times of difficulty, God is with us. That means that even when it seems like uh, 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 the Egyptians is closing in on us, God is with us. Even when it seems like uh, we will die here in Egypt, God is with us. Even when it seems like the storm is about to break the ship and we're going to die, God is with us. Even when, thank you God, I'm reminded of Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, as they were lighting the fire amongst the sticks and amongst the leaves, the Bible says that a viper, a snake, strikes him and he's hanging out him. And the people say, man, we know you're about to die. That's a poisonous snake that just bit you. And Paul shook it off and he continued to live. Why? Because God is with us. God is with us in spite of what we're going through, in spite of what I'm facing, in spite of how bad 2020 
2020 has been here. Watch this. One thing I know for certain is that God has been with us. Amen. And God has been with us. He is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. So watch this. When we go to Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, 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 is explaining what was prophesied in Isaiah. And he says his name, Jesus, talking about Jesus, his name is Emmanuel, which means God is with us to let us know that not only did Jesus dwell among the people physically, but he's still alive and living and dwelling among us spiritually today. That he is with us. And one thing I know is sure uh, 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 it is the promise of God. And the promise of God is this. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is with us everywhere we go. God is with us everywhere we go. Allow him to take leadership. Allow him to take lead. God is with us everywhere we go. His name is Emmanuel. That's who Jesus is. His name is Emmanuel. Come on. So, so now when you're singing that song, Emmanuel, you got a better understanding to know that, man, God is with me everywhere I go. Even when I'm in the classrooms, God is with me. Even when I'm in the workplace, God is with me. Even when I'm in, uh, 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 isolated or alone, God is with me. Even when it seems like I'm in darkness, God is with me. God is with me everywhere I go. So I appreciate the name Emmanuel. What makes Jesus the greatest gift is because he's indescribable. Uh, we have so many names that we can go down the list and describe who he is. But I know that God saved this one last for me. Emmanuel. Because we sing the song, we really don't even know what we're singing. Because there's not a day that goes by in my life where I don't need God with me. Mm -hmm. I need him every step of the way. Yes. Every step of the way. I need him to encourage me. <clears throat> Watch this. I need him to convict me. I need him to chastise me. I need him to teach me. I need him to counsel me. I need him to punish me. I need him to do all these things that's going to help me grow as a believer. That's going to help me better my relationship with him. God is with us. His name is Emmanuel. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. And that there's no one <laughs> like him. So here's my challenge for you today. My challenge for you today is, is, is man, and, and listen, don't wait till you're in your, your, your darkest hours to sing praises to Jesus. Don't wait to, to, to all chaos that has happened in your life and you just feel like you have no place to turn to, 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 to sing a, a hymnal of praise to Jesus. But praise Jesus anyway. Praise him. Uh, uh, watch this. Praise him anyhow. That makes it what the song say. Praise him. Praise him in the midst of the storm. Praise him. Watch this. He's the God of the hills and the battles. Right? So, so don't just praise him in the valley. I mean, oh, uh, 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 Lord, I need you now. No, I need you whenever, every step, every step, every day of my life. Yeah. I need you. I need you. I need you. And what I love about Mary's song that she's singing, again, I know this is repetitive, but I'm about to challenge you. I'm about to challenge you to stop just using your uh, mouth and begin to use the mouth from your soul, your heart. Sing it from within. Uh, uh, when, when, if you ever have a singer instructor, a singing instructor, they tell you, sing from within. Sing from within because that brings out a different type of emotion. It brings out a different type of feeling. So when we're talking about Jesus as the greatest gift, let that come from deep within, not just what your pastor says, but because of what your soul says. Your soul says Jesus. Your soul says Emmanuel. Your soul says the love of God. Your soul says uh, you're the Lord of my salvation. Your, your soul says that he's a healer. Your soul says that he's a way maker. Your soul says that he's, a, that he's not a man that he shall lie. That's what your soul says. Your soul says that he's great. Your soul says 
that needs joy. Your soul says that needs peace. Your soul says that. Because it's coming from deep within. Thank you, Jesus. So when I look at the term Emmanuel, I'm looking at it as something that the people need in the Old Testament. I'm looking at as someone that, that Matthew and the other apostles needed. And I'm looking at the one that we need today. <laughs> and the beauty of it is, watch this, thank you, God. Because the main meaning is God is with us. That he's the same God from back then. Mm -hmm. He's the same God today. Yeah. If he healed and delivered back then, he'll heal and deliver today. Yes, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That he will never change. And that he's great. And there's no one like him. And his name is Emmanuel. Jesus is the greatest now it would be foolish of me not to offer an invitation for you to receive the greatest gift. The greatest gift, which is Jesus. Wrapped up in so many different things. Maybe you're someone who says, you know what, I need Savior. Yeah, Jesus is that. Maybe you're someone who says, you know what, I need counsel. Yeah, Jesus is that. Maybe you're someone who says, you know what, I need healing. Yeah, Jesus is that. Maybe you're someone who says, man, you know what, I, 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 I need a father because my father was never there. Yeah, Jesus is that. Maybe you're someone who says, you know what, um, I need delivery. Yeah, Jesus is that. Maybe you're someone who says, you know what, I need peace in my life. Yeah, Jesus is that. Maybe you're someone who says, you know what, um, man, God, I just need you. I need Emmanuel. I need Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is that. He's all that we need. Lord, you are everything that I have, everything that I long for. You're all that I ever need. That's who you are. <laughs> He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's light in the darkness. That is who you are. My wife doesn't know this, but I'm going to ask her to sing a little bit of way maker. If she doesn't mind, sing a little bit of Waymaker or any, any song that's in your heart. Um, because we want to, we want every week, we want to remind the people of who Jesus is. We can never learn enough about Jesus. Yeah. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. says this, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. God never stops working. So we should never stop praising. We should never stop praising. It means expressing our thanks, giving thanks to him. That's what Mary did, man. She gave thanks because she was chosen, and she gave thanks, man, simply because she knew who Jesus was. She knew what God has done in her life. Man, I, I, I challenge you right now. Sing that hymn from your heart. For God is good. And he has offered you the greatest gift. So right now, for those who may be watching, if you have not received Jesus, 
but you feel something within you that's saying, you know what, it's time for a change. I want you to pray with me right now. I'm going to pray for you first. I'm going to pray for you first. I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. And I confess that I'm a sinner who's in need of a Savior. Come into my life, Jesus. Save me. Deliver me. Free me that I may spend eternity with you. I give you leadership. I give you uh, 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 the, the ability to reign and rule all over my life. I now call you Lord and Savior. Listen, if you pray that prayer, I want to welcome you into the family. The Bible says uh, we now be called God, Abba Father. That's what makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. We are now a part of the same family. The second prayer I want to do is maybe you're saying, you know what, I believe in Jesus, but man, my fire has just worn out. I don't know what to believe anymore. It doesn't seem like things are, 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 are going my way. Let me pray for you right now. Father God, I pray for those who fire is dwindling. I pray that you just ignite that fire, that you just spark a blaze within their lives. I pray that that fire just spreads like a wildfire. And that people just, uh, 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 that, that, that whoever is listening says, you know what, um, um, I, I, I'm through playing, I'm through procrastinating, I'm, true, I'm truly, totally surrendering to Jesus, and I want to live for Jesus, and I want to proclaim his name to the world. I pray this in Jesus' name. The next group of people I want to pray for is those who may need healing. Those who are sick, dealing with COVID-19, um, recently lost people through COVID-19, or, or whatever other issues may be out there. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for those who need your comfort. I pray for those who need your touch. I pray for those who need your love. I pray for those who need um, just your shoulder to lean on. I pray that you provide peace. I, I pray that you provide understanding. I pray that you provide counsel. I pray that you just be the provider that you are for those who are in need right now. We love you and we pray you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, Father, I pray for Full of Faith Bible Church. I pray that you just continue to use us to have an impact on the lives of people. Father, we pray right now that, um, um, that, it, that we, we, we remember that it's not about us, but it's all about you. That we don't get wrapped up in anything else. We don't get wrapped up in people seeing us. We don't care if people see us. We just want people to see you. So everything we do, we point it into the direction of Jesus. So people can, 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 can say with confidence that Jesus is salvation, that Jesus is the Lamb of God, that Jesus is a mighty counselor, a, a, a wonderful counselor. Jesus is a mighty God. Jesus is a healer. Jesus is everlasting Father. Jesus is Prince of Peace. Jesus is Lord of Lords. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is King of Kings. Jesus is everything that we need. We pray this in Jesus' name. That you just continue to make a way out of no way. We believe in signs and wonders. We believe in miracles. We believe in your favor. We believe in your grace. We believe in your mercy. We believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And no one can get us to doubt that. And so we pray right now that those who may be watching, who may be discouraged, Father, we pray that you do something in their lives, Father God. So what that fire is ignited. But thank you, Father God. I heard God say this. Um, blessed are those who can't see but still believe. I'm challenging you to believe right now. We love you and we praise you, Jesus. It's in your holy name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap.
under the Together We Build, Together We Grow portion of the website. There is a PayPal link as well as a PO box if you would like to mail in your offering. Um, we pray that you have a Merry Christmas, and we, look, we are looking forward to a happy new year. Amen, amen. Listen, um, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, we're going to have a service from 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 six to probably I guess about seven, like I know all time. Um, um, New Year's Eve, I know many people call it the night watch service. Some people call it New Year's Eve service. Well, Full of Faith Bible Church is going to have that same thing. We'll be here in my living room, so we're looking for um, that live um, uh, broadcast uh, 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 as well. That's New Year's Eve um, um, at six o'clock. New Year's Eve at 6 o'clock. We won't be long because we know people may be doing other different things. Man, listen, stay safe. Come on up, family. Stay safe. Um, um, uh, uh, keep praying. Keep hoping. Keep believing, man. Jesus is the only way to the Father. So let's continue to love on Jesus and let's continue to love one another. All right? Listen, we're going to see our benediction scripture. Um, um, so we're going to speak this into your life right now. Here we go. One. Two, three. May, May the Lord, Lord bless you and keep, keep you. May the Lord smile down on you and show you his kindness. May, May the Lord answer your prayers and give you peace. So, Father, this is our prayer for your people. We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Ready. Break. Break.